In this video, we're going to do some basic work with averages. We're going to look at finding the mean, the mode, and the median from a data set. A data set is just a collection of numbers. Later in the video, we'll look at something called the range, and the range tells us how spread out our data set is. So let's start off. We're asked to find the A mean, B mode, C median, and D range of the following numbers. Let's start off with the mean. When we're talking about the mean, this is the common average that we use. We simply add up all of the values and divide by the number of values that we have. So we can write in this particular case, the mean is going to be 5 plus 4 plus 6 plus 3 plus 7 plus 5 plus 5. And we divide by the number of items we have in the data set. We can see there are seven numbers, so I divide by seven. Often students remember the mean as the mean one, as you've got lots of work to do to calculate it. It's entirely up to you though if you want to do it that way. So I prefer just to remember what they are, but it's your call on that one. Five plus four is nine, 15, 18, 25, 30, 35. So this is going to give us now 35. So 35 divided by seven, which is going to give us five. Let's just check whether 5 is logical. If we had something that was now less than 3, quite clearly that couldn't be the average value, as it's smaller than the lowest value. If I had a number greater than 7, clearly, again, that couldn't be the mean average, as it's greater than the largest number. 5 seems pretty good from our data set. So the mean average is 5. So let's go ahead and find the mean from here. This time we got 2.4, 3.7, 0, 6.2, 9.4, 4.8, 12 and 6.1. So we've got a collection of decimals and integers. So integers, of course, are whole numbers. Let's just focus on this zero. This zero is quite interesting. Often students say, do I have to include it? The answer is yes, you do. So, for example, if these were test scores and we were scored out of 12, Let's say you were given 2.4 for your first uh, essay or test, 3.7, and then you got naught. If we excluded that, that would be unfair because essentially we could get loads of noughts and then get one 12 and just say, we'll just keep the 12. We need to include it. So I'm going to include it and include it in the number of data items that we got. So this time the wording has changed slightly. We're asked to find the mean instead of the following numbers of the data set. So let's go ahead and calculate this. So let's put this in. The mean, we're going to have now 2.4 plus 3.7 plus the 0. So I'm showing that I'm adding it. Plus the 6.2 plus now the 9.4 plus the 4.8 plus now the 12 plus the 6.1. And we need to divide this now by the number of items that we've got. If we look now in here, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 8 data items. So if I go ahead and divide this by 8, we can find a mean. I'm going to do this in a calculator. So if we go ahead and do that, I'm going to have now 2.4. Then I'm going to have 3.7. Of course, I don't need to put the 0 in. 6.2. We're going to have now 9.4 plus the 4.8, and do check that you're doing this correctly as uh, it's quite easy to make the mistakes. And that will give us now on here 223 over 5, which is 44.6, and we need to divide that answer by 8. 44.6 divided by 8. So I'm showing now full workings. If we look at that now, I'll divide my answer by 8. If I divide this by 8, that's going to give us 5.575. So we can write now 5.575, or if we like, 5.6 to 1 decimal place. If this was in a test, we might be given a level of accuracy to aim for. So there we go. Is that realistic? Well, if we look, our minimum score is 0, our maximum score is 12. 5.75 at least is above, not neither above nor below those values. So that is my mean average. Let's now find the mean from the following numbers. This time we've got negatives. So how many numbers have I got? I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we're just going to go ahead and do this. So let's put this in. So we'll put in the mean. We're going to have negative 3. To that we're going to add 17. 
we're going to add 12, we're going to add 4, we're going to add 6, we'll add the other 4, we're going to subtract 1, we're going to subtract 5, we're going to subtract another 1, and we're going to add 7, and I need to divide by the number of items. If we look here, we've got 10 items, so I'll be dividing by 10. Okay, let's do this manually. Uh, negative 3 plus 17 is 14, 26, 30, 36, 40, then we're going to have now on here, that should be plus, shouldn't it? Let's just put that back on there, that doesn't look good. So 14, 26, 30, 36, 40, 39, then we're going to have on this one 30, that's going to take me down to 34, 33, and then add the 7, that is going to give me 40, 40 over 10 is going to give me 4. So the mean average, if this again, was temperatures. So for example, if temperatures in a city for 10 different days, the mean average would be four degrees Celsius or whatever you were measuring in. So that gives us the mean average. Is it realistic? Well, it's certainly not higher than 17 and it's not less than negative five. So at least we're in those boundaries. Okay, let's now find the mode. The mode is the most frequently occurring number. So we can say when we have now numeric data, the mode is the most frequently occurring number. From this, we can see it straight off. Five occurs three times. All the others occur just once. So the mode is five. If you want a way of remembering this mode, we have now MO, MO. Mode and then most. So all I'm doing is using the first two letters, mode and most. If we now just uh, just clear back, because we'll use this again, uh, let's do that, let's get rid of, that's what I want to get rid of. Okay, let's now look at finding the mode of this data set. If we look here, 2.4, 3.7, 0, 6.2, 9.4, 4.8, 12, and 6.1, we don't have a mode. A common error here is to put the mode is zero. It's not. We can see zero is in here. What we would say is that there's no mode. So all of these now have the same number of values. So we've only got one 2.4, we've only got one 3.7. So don't fall into a trap of saying the mode is naught. Um, again, even if naught wasn't in there, saying that it's naught would be incorrect. It's got no mode. So all of these are equally likely, if you're doing probability, equally likely to be chosen at random. Okay, let's look at the mode of this one. Now, if I go along here, what have we got? Uh, negative three, there's only one of those. Now, we do have two fours. We've got two fours, but also I've got now two negative ones. Have I got any more negative ones or fours? No, and then I've got nothing else. So we could say that this had two modes or was bimodal. So we can say the modes now are going to be negative one and four. We can have more than one mode and this in this case is by mode or by meaning two so we have two modes in that data set so nice and straightforward we just work out on there how many numbers we've got occurring more than once if we don't we have no mode let's now look at the median with the median we're trying to find the middle value so median if you want another way of remembering this if you're going to a, a shop and you buy the medium size, it's in the middle. So medium, median. So for example, you can have small, medium and large, medium is in the middle. What we need to do here though, is put these in order, smallest to largest. Don't cross them out. I'm just going to put now a little line under it. So I've got three, I've got four. Then I've got the three fives. So if we do that, we have the three fives. We've got five, five and five. Then we have six, and we can put six in, and then we have seven. So we want to find the middle number. Clearly the middle number here is gonna be the five. I've got three this side of it now, and I've got three this side, and that gives us now that the median is also five. So with this data set, we have the mode, the median, and the mean, all equaling five. Okay, let's look at the next one. Uh, this one right here. So let's go ahead and put these in order and we will do the smallest first. So we're going to have the zero, then we're going to have now the 2.4, so let's put 2.4 on, so 2.4, then we're going to have the next one, what's the next one going to be? The 3.7, so 
so 3.7. As stated, don't go ahead and cross these out. If we make an error, we can't go back. We've got 4.8, so 4.8. The next one is for 6.1, so we've got 6.1. Then the next one is for 6.2, so let's go ahead and put the 6.2. Then we've got the 9.4 and then the 12. So 9.4 and then we have the 12. If we look at this, the middle of the data set here is now the middle of a set of even numbers. So the middle is just here. What we do in this case, when we have an even data set, as we saw in the last one, this was odd, so we could find the middle. We find the middle of the middle. So what we would do is find halfway in between 4.8 and 6.1. Alternatively, if you didn't want to think about that in your head, you can simply say that it's 4.8 plus the 6.1 divided by 2, and that would give us now the median value. So if we have now an even data set, we find what's halfway in between now these two middle numbers. So if I do that on a calculator, I'm going to have the 4.8 and then plus now the 6.1 and I'm going to divide the answer by two. So our median value would be 5.45. So 5.45, it's halfway in between the two middle numbers. Okay, let's do this one. With this one now, we've got negative numbers. So let's be very careful. Smallest to largest, we're going to have now negative 5. Then we're going to have negative 3, so negative 3. We've got two negative 1s, so let's put these in. We've got negative 1, we've got negative 1. We've then got the two 4s, and we need to put both of them in, as you would expect. We've got on here now the 6, the 7, so let's put the 6 and the 7 on. We've got now the 12 and the 17. So if we look at this one now, we saw from before there are 10 items. So with this one right here, we need to locate the middle. The middle is going to be just here. We can have five either side and we need to find the midpoint. Now, if we think about this quite clearly, the median now is going to be four. Halfway in between four and four is going to be four. If you want to argue this with yourself, well, add them together and divide them by two. So that's gonna give us eight over two, which is equal to four. So that works out quite nicely. So if we have an even data set, we simply now find the middle of the middle. Okay, let's now look at what we call the range. The range tells us now how spread out the data set is. So for example, now if these were test scores out of 10, we can see they range from three to seven. To calculate the range, we subtract the lowest value from the highest value. So we can say in this case now, and we would need to show workings, that the range is 7 minus 3, which is 4. And that is the range. If you want a nice way of remembering this, when you go shopping, the most expensive t-shirt might be 30 quid. The cheapest one might be a fiver. So it'd be 30 quid minus 5 quid, which gives you a range of 25 pounds. So the price range is 25 pounds. It's the highest, take the lowest. Okay, let's look at this one right here. The range, quite nice to calculate on here. We can say now that the range of this data set is going to be the highest value, subtract the lowest, and we can say that 12 minus 0 is 12. So, for example, if this was now the rainfall on to, uh, how many, many days, we had eight days, but the uh, the difference in the range is going to, or the difference in the values is going to be 12. So if there was a range of 12 millimetres or whatever you, you're dealing with. So it's the highest, take the lowest. And it tells us how spread out the data is. Okay, let's go ahead and find the range on here. So this time we have a maximum, let's say, temperature of 17 and a minimum temperature of negative 5. So just writing this down, we're going to find the difference so it's going to be 17 and we're going to subtract the negative 5. So that is going to give us a range of 22. Be careful with this one. If you like to think it another way, if we're at negative 5 on a temperature scale, we first need to go to naught, then we need to go to 17. I need to jump up by 5 and then I need to jump up by another uh, 17. So adding these two together, that gives us 22. A common error here is to say that the range is 12. It's 22 as it's the difference between the highest and the lowest. 
So there we go, some basic work with the three, uh, the three main calculations, the mean, the mode and the median, and then we looked at the range.